Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, you're going to learn how to spot and treat an infected ear piercing, which is quite a common condition. Hopefully this is going to be helpful for you if you're a healthcare professional. It may also be useful if you're a patient and you think you might have an infected ear piercing. We're going to be go covering a couple of things in this video. Firstly, we're going to go over why this is an important condition to recognize. Secondly, we're going to go over the key questions you need to ask the patient during history taking. Thirdly, we'll go over key points to elicit during the examination. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we'll cover key points related to managing an infected ear secondary to a piercing. If you're a health professional, you might want to stick around until the very end of the video because I've included some self-assessment questions for you to test your knowledge that you've hopefully acquired during this video. And I've included the answers to these in the description box beneath this video. So apart from it being an unsightly and potentially painful condition, why do medical professionals get so worried about an infected ear piercing? Well, it can be a potentially serious condition because the condition pinna perichondritis is usually a result of penetrating trauma, such as an infected piercing. If you leave this untreated, an abscess may form, lifting the perichondrial layer off the cartilage and resulting in necrosis and potentially a cauliflower deformity. Pinna perichondritis may also progress to systemic infection or a serious soft tissue infection called necrotizing fasciitis. So what questions do you need to ask during the history? Well, you want to start off by taking a focused history, asking the patient when and where they have their ears pierced, ask if they've noticed any blood or pus coming out, whether they've had a temperature, whether the area around the piercing has been very painful, swollen or red. You want to find out have they had anything like this before because you could look at previous microbiology specimens to see which antibiotics they might have been sensitive to in the past and check if they're immunosuppressed or have diabetes. The main question is then, is there any abscess or necrosis because of the infected piercing? So examine the ear carefully. You want to look for painful erythema and induration of the pinna with loss of contours, which you can see in this photo. You also want to look for signs of a localized abscess formation, which you can see in this photo. You want to look for necrosis of soft tissue, which you can see in this photo with the dusky looking skin. You want to look for spreading cellulitis of the face or scalp. And if they do have cellulitis, try and mark it with a surgical marking pen. Check the patient's temperature and obtain a full set of observations. And of course, look in any ear exam at both ears using an otoscope and also perform basic hearing tests if you have this equipment available. It's also worth doing cranial nerve examination and any other general neurological examinations as you need to. So how do you manage an infected ear piercing? Well, first of all, it's important to remove the piercing. You then want to take microbiological swabs of the infected area, especially if there's any pus, and send these to the lab for cultures and sensitivities. If you're worried about sepsis, then you can also take blood cultures. Once you've obtained the swab, you can clean away any discharge using saline. You can then start a trial of antibiotics. In my hospital trust, the guidelines are flucloxacillin and ciprofloxacin, assuming that the patient's not penicillin allergic. However, exact antibiotic regimes will vary from hospital to hospital, so it's best to consult your local microbiology guidance. The commonest causative organism in pinna perichondritis is Pseudomonas arginosa, and in pinna cellulitis, it can be Staph aureus or other skin organisms. Finally, make sure that you give the patient good pain relief because this is a painful condition. You also want to advise them that any piercing should not be replaced until a reasonable interval has passed and there's no gross deformity. Patients should be advised that cartilaginous piercings, especially the ones along the top here, are at high risk for severe infections. Finally, what are the important red flag features or things that you don't want to miss which are linked to an infected ear piercing? Well, you don't want to miss an abscess or tissue necrosis, and I showed you some pictures of that earlier. If it looks like a complication such as these, then you want to consult the ENT specialist doctor. So if you're in a UK hospital, call the ENT registrar. 
The patient will need to be nil by mouth pending a decision to operate and drain the abscess, for example. And if you're the admitting doctor, make sure that you get IV access and take things such as a full blood count, use an ease, CRP, coagulation and INR bloods. If you've got a new piercing and you're a patient, well, here are the few things to do at home to try and avoid an infection from occurring. And I'll pop these on the screen now. So now we've covered some important points in the history, exam, and how to manage an ear which is infected following a piercing. Why don't you test your knowledge using these questions and the answers are below in the description box. That brings us to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for similar videos and similar content. Please also feel free to leave me a comment. It's great to hear from people who watch these videos and it always inspires me to make more. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.